Welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports. This is our trainer room, and I was watching a video by Lewis Scott down in Florida, and he was talking about <clears throat> how to ride in a group, how to ride efficiently, safely. So go check out some of his videos. Lots of good stuff for group riding. Uh, tips and tricks, if you will. And one of the things he mentioned is something I try to teach new riders that come out to my rides, or even experienced riders. If you don't know the hit, my history as an endurance rider, typically you're out alone. So you can develop some really bad habits by riding alone. No one's calling you out on unsafe things you're doing, or things that are pace related that you're doing that may compromise the fluidity of a pace line. When I do my 500 milers, they're not draft legal, so you're by yourself. Most of the training that an endurance rider does is typically by themselves, because who wants to go out on a 180 mile training route? So let's talk about what Luis was talking about on his video. When you're in a pace line or in a group environment, you don't want to be that guy or girl that lets a gap open up in front of you. You don't want to be that guy or girl who surges to close that gap. You want to be able to stay in a safe distance, not overlap the wheel, stay behind the rider, stay in that draft, save a ton of energy, but your responsibility is to keep the cohesion of everyone behind you. Could be one rider, could be 20 riders. And after five or six riders, that one wheel, wheel length or bike length that you've opened up and you serves to close becomes multiple wheel lengths and bike lengths behind you, five, six, 10 riders behind you. So let's talk about the concept of soft pedaling. And with my lovely assistant Jess, we're gonna to try to do this in one take <laughs> without any B-roll. So just be aware the camera's gonna be moving around instead of a nice, beautiful cut. All right, so you're in the draft. Everything's great. And, and by the way, I love Luis Scott's uh, name for his channel now. It's uh, the good wheel. We are all looking for that good wheel. So you're on, you're on the wheel, but this person is surging and doing this kind of stuff, and he's creating, he or she is creating a gap in front of you, and so what do you do, right? Well, you kind of power up a little bit, but don't get up out of the saddle and sprint to close the gap. Okay, now you've closed the gap, and Maybe this person is pedal, pedal, coast, pedal, pedal, coast, pedal, pedal, coast. So they're surging like this. Now all of a sudden you're on his wheel again. So soft pedaling. Let's say you're pedaling at 90 cadence. Soft pedaling might be about 60 cadence. And then you feel that your speed has come down about a mile or two per hour. Re-engage your um, the tension on the chain. It's much easier to go from a 60 cadence back up to 90, right, only 30, than to go from zero back up to 90, right? And so this surging impacts the group behind you. Okay, Jess, if you can shoot down here. And the good thing about using this kicker indoors is we can have a very static environment to show this demonstration. So here we are at about 80 something cadence. And we've closed the gap on someone. Now we soft pedal, soft pedal. Oh, there we go, we get back on the wheel because we don't want to fall off too much, right? This is what you don't want to do. So here you are, you're pedaling, and then you stop, and then you know, you're applying the brakes, and then, oh, okay, now I've got to get back on the wheel, and you, 
you know, you try to catch up again. And that surging is not good. So you want to hear a little bit of freewheel, and then pick up your cadence again, right? So that's today's cycling tip. Be very fluid, be very consistent, and even if you surge, be a, a surge in a way that doesn't impact the rest of the group behind you. And you know what? If you're getting dropped, please pull out of the line. There's no shame in that. We all get dropped. It depends who shows up that day, depends on who's having a good day. And, you know, Jane, who typically is not that strong that day, is just pulling at the front and, he's, and she's just driving the pace hard. Pull out of the line, it's okay. Pull out, get towards the back, and everything's good. That way, you're not causing a disruption. <laughs> Sorry about my breathing. But you're not causing a disruption in the pack, in the line, right? So you pull out, give whatever motion and hand signal that works for your club, your local region of the country or the world, and pull out of the line before it's too late and let everyone else start filling the hole. Okay, that's today's cycling tip. Please like and subscribe. I've got other videos already in the hopper, one of which is the SRAM Force, new SRAM Force re redesign. And we need subscribers on this channel so that I get an opportunity to test and evaluate the product pre-embargo releasing. So those are the types of things that would help the channel. Subscribe and you get the product and I can touch it, feel it, ride it and give you my um, unbiased opinion. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you up the road.